spring football starting to wind down. How, what are your initial thoughts on what you've seen so far this spring? Um, I am uh, pleased with the progress that our young cornerbacks have made. Um, uh, Coach Fitzpatrick got them, uh, you know, where they need to be physically. I mean, some of the guys have gained weight. Uh, some guys have lost weight. And so they, they all came to camp, you know, right where they need to be. So, uh, and then they have performed as such uh, up to date. What's it been like, again, getting to coach this cornerback group, getting to be with them day in and day out? Now, this group is 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 awesome. Uh, so that, you know, they're all young, um, it, you know, and, and it's a pleasure to be around because they're fresh. Like, you know, been around, you know, Mike and Jamal and those guys last year, they, they were settled in, they knew most stuff. So they weren't as fresh faced and uh, a bright eyed and bushy tail about everything like these guys are. And they want to, this group is very hungry about for knowledge and, and want to, and they, they have a great desire to, to understand the game from a, from a different perspective. So it's a, it's a joy to be able to coach and teach um, in a way that, that, that is, uh, I hadn't had in a while uh, because the other guys were senior and they had been around and had a lot of playing time. I don't want to talk about the past too much, but Coach Niumatololo called Mikey McMorris one of the greatest, if not the greatest, cornerbacks to come through Navy. How do you go about replacing a guy like him and Jamal Glenn? Uh, there's no replacing uh, those, uh, you know, Mikey McMorris or, or Jamal Glenn, for that matter, who, who had a terrific season. Um, and, it, you know, you should, you know it, it'd be – you get into trouble trying to compare, right, and, and trying to – Contrast uh, th those those type type, type of guys. Um, uh, so, but what we have to do is is to if you look at if you take a look at Jamal and Mikey, right? They were they were uh, undersized, um, but with the dogged mentality and the super smart football players. Um, what we have now are bigger, faster, stronger players. Well, I don't know about faster, but definitely bigger players. Um, who, who don't have a quite the understanding and knowledge of the game yet. And so what we're trying to do is they can't replicate those guys, but we're just trying to build uh, hopefully a better model uh, down the road uh, because what we've got early on is certainly uh, as promising as, as those guys were, uh, you know, but maybe more so uh, when they were at this stage in their careers. Thank you. I'll pass it on to Wags. Go ahead, Wags. So, I mean, how much experience do you feel Embiid and Elias got last year? I know that Elias is kind of like, a, you know, emerged as the uh, nickel corner, and I guess Embiid got some, some, you know, reps as uh, at corner. I mean, do you feel like those guys learned a lot last season, RB? I think, yes. Yeah, so, uh, the way that uh, Coach Newberry designed the defense uh, in the nickel package, you know, putting Mikey as, as, a, as a nickel safety, uh, it allowed us to get a, an extra cornerback on the field. Uh, and so we were playing with three cornerbacks at some time. And, and, and those those were quality game reps in which we saw those guys grow. And, and they they took that, that, you know, experience into this this, this offseason, uh, into the spring football. And, and it's, it has been invaluable to see, uh, you know, where they picked up at, you know, after the season. So those reps were – Absolutely uh, amazing to give us a head start uh, into the upcoming season. So, I mean, what are the key things these guys need to work on? I mean, obviously, they're still very young and inexperienced. I mean, they've got a long way to go in their development. I mean, they're asking a lot for these guys that are current plebes to move into starting roles. Um, but they, they got to be ready come fall. They're going against some pretty good passing offenses. Absolutely. So, um, so we've got to get them caught up, right? There are only so many reps we can get them in spring ball. And we try to make sure that those, uh, those guys that we anticipate starting uh, get the majority of the reps. Uh, but we got to also prepare uh, uh, some depth at, 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 at the cornerback position. So we got to get a lot of guys some reps. So in order to, to uh, overcome that, uh, we got to spend a lot of time in the film room uh, manufacturing reps, mental reps in their, in their minds uh, and, and using technology to to help us, um, uh, what we you know I guess you know, get mental reps done uh, during their off periods, uh, and then over the course of the spring and summer, so that we come back into fall 
with you know thousands of mental reps uh, being had you know on a computer and, and then whatever they decide to do on their own uh, during the off months. How are they coming along? Awesome. Um, I mean, if you if you the, the we've made so many plays. I think we're better uh, because uh, so it's like almost like the. These guys, like it is, I guess it's Masters Week, so it's equated to golf. Uh, so Mike, Mikey, and, and Jamal had had already mastered their swings, right? And they and they, they knew, you know, how to hit the ball. Uh, these guys are are just like brand new golfers with a lot of talent, right? And they they haven't mastered their swings yet, and so we're able to develop those swings and to get them uh, in a more perfect uh, form because they're still, um, you know, uh, still they still have some it can be molded a little bit better than, than those, those other guys so uh we've seen these guys really make a lot of plays and they're, they've been the benefactors of, of of what we did last year and the mistakes we made that that we've corrected those and now they they are really looking really good uh and they made a ton of plays in, in spring ball uh more so than we've seen in, over the years so maybe what do you feel like um, are the strengths of uh, both Elias and Embiid, and maybe what you know I mean, what, what do you what do they do well? What do you like about each of these guys? So uh, as a as a as a tandem, they're they're they're, they're bigger guys, um, and um, what we've seen they're very physical guys. Um, you know, McMorris is a is a is a, he's a cat. Like he you know he could <laughs> it's hard to. For a, for a receiver to, to to stop block him in in open space, uh, it was, I mean he he could get around blockers without touching them. Uh, these guys go through blockers like they 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 go through and try to destroy people. So that what what we've seen is they're heavier, uh, more physical guys, um, and and what we've seen was that uh, they they have a you know um, they're fearless uh, and so they. They take a little bit more risk than than, than the older guys did. Um, now that that comes with the price, um, but but they are definitely playing at a level that 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 we like them to uh, be, to be playing at at this stage in their careers. And so I feel very comfortable with where they are. Now we're not anywhere near uh, where we want to be, but uh, certainly I love the progress and I love where we are, um, and I feel very comfortable um, with, with them going forward. So going into spring camp, um, uh, looks like Willie Collins, five, the fifth, and uh, Matthew Peters were listed as the backups. Is that still the case, or is there other guys making a push? Uh, yeah, those are the primary t- uh, two guys behind him. Uh, you know, Willie Collins had you know handful of snaps last last year as well. Uh, played w- well versus Tulsa, and then came in on some other games. Uh, played played the SMU game out, um, and so. He he has the next greatest number of, of, of snaps, and, and, and probably can he's, he's going to help help us out this year as well. And then Matthew Peters is a, is a special young talent. Uh, came over from the quarterback position. Now he's six three, uh, jumps thirty eight inches, you know, and, and runs twenty one miles per hour. Uh, and so um, that is, uh, you know, he's coming from a quarterback position. He's been playing quarterback now a year and a half, and so um, I'm really really excited about him. And what he's doing, uh, because we haven't had that kind of size and speed over here. I mean, that, that's the kind of size and speed that everybody wants at the cornerback position in, in the country. So, uh, if we can get him to to, um, to to become comfortable at at that spot, I mean, we really got some uh, some really good depth uh, going forward. Now, again, they're all young, and they're and really all freshmen. I mean, when I mean, you think about it, even Peters, who's a sophomore, you know, he hadn't played any snaps at the cornerback position. So, they're all going into this season pretty fresh. Uh, and so, but you know, with a talent like that, you look at Willie Collins, who's two hundred pound kid, um, strong, uh, and Matthew Peters, maybe at one hundred seventy five pounds, maybe even the strongest of them all. Um, we really, I feel really good about the young talent that we have. In that, if I had to um, uh, design a, a, a prototype of a cornerback, it, it would be what we have in the room right now: Elias, who's six foot, you know, and B, who's 5'10", but he's 185 pounds and strong as an ox. Uh, Matthew Peters, who's, who's tall and rangy and can run like a deer. And then a Willie Collins, who's uh, more stout, 200-pound uh, kid who can take on, you know, take on some of these, these bigger uh, teams in the, in, the, in the run game. So 
Uh, I got a pretty good room. It, you look across the board. Uh, I just got to get them the experience they need going to, into the to the season. Um, there will be some growing pains, but we're going to alleviate that, um, you know, through the rest of spring ball and then through some technology. And, and then they are a group who can, can work in the offseason by themselves to get better. Thanks, RB. Thank you. All right, I'll make another trip around, Phil. Yeah, Coach, uh, you kind of touched on this a little, but what traits do you look for in a cornerback? Well, we just start with, like, the physical traits. Um, typically, like everybody in the country, we want a 5'11", six-foot corner. Uh, but we understand we're Navy. Uh, and what we get and what we've been successful with is somewhere between 5'9 and 5'10", um, who, you know, a little bit undersized, but quick as a cat, uh, a Brendan Clemens or a son. Andrews, a you know, Mike and Mike Morris, those those body types have done well here for us and been very successful. And so we've kind of stuck with that model. Uh, what we want to see is a six foot, five eleven guy, but hey, we'll take a very talented, explosive five nine, five ten guy in any day of the week. Um, above all else, he has to have a football IQ. Uh, <laughs> well, I, we'll, we'll talk about that guy later, but. Um, uh, a football IQ is, is what we get. So we're the Naval Academy. So the assumption here is that we're going to get some very smart guys um, and that we can use that, that intelligence uh, so that to make them more efficient football players uh, and so that they can understand the defense uh, and, and understand and be coaches on the field uh, is what we're trying to get to. We want to be the smartest players in the conference uh, and that will give us an added advantage. Um, love for them to be uh, hard workers like take a Jamal Glenn, for example. You know, that, that kid, you know, took a, an hour and a half bus ride to get to school every day. Uh, that means he's a grinder. He's a worker. You know, Mike and Orange is undersized, but is fast and quick as a cat. And so um, now we got a little bit better, a little bit bigger versions, right? And Elias Larry and, and B.D. Williams, and, and now a super corner and, and, you know, a super sized corner in Matthew Peters. We can get him right. And so, I'm, you know, what, what I'm looking for is a kid who can come and work his butt off uh, to get him to a point where he can play in conference and play fast. Um, and they got to be smart. Um, they got to be grinders because we gotta, we're going to go against NFL caliber talent every weekend in conference uh, and compete and win. So Coach Newberry has done a great job of taking those, those, uh, those body types and making them successful in his defense. And then lastly, for me, if you listen to scouts talk about the cornerback position, length is always something that's talked about. For a listener that doesn't know all the ins and outs of the corner position, why is length so beneficial or not as beneficial as people may think? Well, I, I think I think people have, you know, if you go back to the Seahawks and, and Richard Sherman and, and, and I forget the other corner's name uh, and, they, and their success, I think everybody started wanting to go to length and get big, tall, uh, former wide receivers and making them to, to defensive backs. I I think that's a, a. I don't think I don't think that is as built out as great as it it, it looks at times. Right? You see a Sauce Gardner at, at Cincinnati. I think he's an anomaly. If you look at the history of the NFL, history of college football, the greatest have been five eleven, six foot, super quick, talented, a Daryl Green who stayed in the league for uh, forever you know, but super fast at 5'8", you know, those guys, we, we see way, we have way more of an opportunity to be successful with that, that body type than you will finding finding a Richard Sherman, 6'4", cornerback, uh, who can run like that. You know, it, it is, it is, yeah, yeah, it, it is more likely that you'll find a 5'11", six-foot guy, um, that, than you will that. So, so I don't really buy into that, that incredible length those guys tend to be not as quick and um, they're long striders in, in, in most cases. And then if you're playing in this league, you, you better be quick, be, better than better than long and fast um, because we, the cornerback position is a reactionary position. You know, the receiver will make a move and you have to counter that move, you know, immediately afterwards. And so if I take too long to get up to speed, uh, like some of the longer guys are, then it doesn't matter how long you are. Um, because the, the ball is already out the, out the quarterback's hands and, and, and already in play. Thank you. Wags. Well, 
So, um, I mean, are you going in nickel packages? Do you, when you go good on good with the offense, do you go, you have your nickel package in place? Yeah, Co Coach Newberry, I mean, a I mean, our offense, uh, they, they've been very uh, um, agreeable to helping us out and, and, and a lot and running some of the stuff we see in conference. Um, and we, you know, and allowing us to practice our nickel stuff, uh, it, even though it's limited, right? But but we can, we have gotten nickel and dime on the field, um, but but it's, it's a limited package just just because of you know what our office does. They don't major in you know conference play, but they've been very um, you know helpful in in, in in running some stuff that we like them to see. Well, I was curious. I mean, when you do go nickel, is there who has been you playing that spot? Uh, I don't know, Co Coach Newberry has, has put a lot of guys in there. He's kind of – I don't think we've we've locked solid to who that sub package looks like or, or personnel-wise. And so it's too early to tell right now. We're just trying to try a lot of guys in there and try to get the best five guys on the field that we can find, the best five DBs. So um, that's still around Robin right now. Nobody's secured in any spots. And last but not least, how are you working with your uh, new assistant coach that's uh... – coaching the safeties you guys Crawford you guys getting along uh it's been awesome um when you know with with, with him being with the DC being freed of of having that that responsibility um uh, we have more time now to get together and, and talk about defensive back play he has a wealth of knowledge uh now and I now I have two other defensive back coaches in, in the building with me uh and I have benefited from him being here um, I'm super excited about now I get to, you know, because you know, I hate to bother the D.C. all the time with, with, with things. He's got D.C. stuff to do. Uh, but now I have a safeties coach that's, that's not uh, tied down with, with game plan and things of that nature. And then we have more time to talk. So I think we'll be better as a defensive backfield uh, just because of the time that we'll have to spend together without having to bother, bother the head man um, with, with, with our sometimes small problems uh, that we can settle now between ourselves. Tell me a little bit about, uh, I know you played on special teams. What what special teams units were you on last season? So last season, my first, the first time I got action on special teams was the SMU game. I was on full return. Uh, that was my first game. And then the next game, I had got um, in like an increased role in uh, on the full return team. And then they put me on kickoff as well. Coverage on both counts, punt coverage and was, kickoff coverage? Yeah, I was punt coverage on, on a on return and then kickoff coverage. So um, when, how much time did you actually see as part of a member of the defense? So my first uh, start was at nickel. I started at nickel against Cincinnati. I would come in the third and long plays. Um, that's when we first put in the nickel package with the corner. So that was my first. I had like like uh, 10, or 10 or so plays that game. And that was my role as the season went on. So, uh, did you pretty much play from Cincinnati on? Did you play in almost every game as the nickel corner? Yeah, mo most games, yes. When we did have the package in, and then uh, SMU when um, Jamal got ejected, I played like uh, I came in after him. So, oh, that's really how my role was. So, obviously, being thrown into the fire as a freshman, um, you know, talk about the experience. I mean, I'm sure it was trial by fire, if you will. Um, you know, talk about what you've learned and, you know, how great was the experience? I mean, yeah, I believe my freshman year was – I was really blessed to have the, the year I had. Um, uh, being so that a lot of freshmen, they really don't get action. Um, just being here at the Naval Academy because of all the stuff we had to go through, especially with the summer. So just coming in, learning all the plays, that was my biggest focus. And then just in practice capitalizing in those opportunities that allowed me to play on the field. So – I would say throughout the year, as I got more comfortable and comfortable, like getting to see that um, how the game is, it's faster and stuff like that. So that was my biggest experience. And it really like prepared me for where I am right now. And what did you learn from seniors like uh, Jamal Glenn and Michael McMorris? Yeah, that's like um, Jamal, he really, he really uh, took me like, under his wing. Like right when I got there, um, he taught me the plays, everything really, because um, my room was right next to him. So I'll go to his room like every day at night, get extra filming with him, look over practice. And like, that's really the role he played. And throughout the whole season, he really just looked out after me on and off the field. And Mikey as well. I just really looked up to them because um, they were like, they knew what they were doing. 
and they they played well last year too. So looking up to them and their performance, um, it was a it was good um, leadership. So. So, I mean, with those two graduating, I mean, were you surprised to suddenly find yourself atop the depth chart going into spring camp? No, I wouldn't say I was surprised. Um, I knew that the coaching staff had a lot of expectations of me, being that I had seen action and the way I performed like the year before. So I was expecting me to uh, be put in that conversation. And obviously me as myself, I want to be put at number one. So I, it's not, I wasn't surprised to see myself at the top. That's where I expected to be. But I just had to uh, show everyone else that's where I belong. So. So now you're playing field corner, I believe. Is that the position that Mikey played? Uh, so I would say that um, Jamal played more of the field and they would classify Mikey as the boundary. But as the season goes on, when we play more conventional teams, we play no huddle, you don't really switch like that. So you have to be able to play both. But yeah, I do. I am um, classified as a field corner. Yes. And so, well, I mean, going so far through spring camp, I mean, obviously it's different from playing the nickel. Um, kind of talk about, because usually a nickel, you're going to be inside, aren't you? You are usually on a slot. That's usually, but we didn't use it that way. Mikey would go to like a slot, like a more like a safety kind of role, and I would just play the outside or the field. I'll play like the field and Jamal will go to the boundary. So I wouldn't say I really played in the slot. But yeah, that's how we that's how we did it last year. I got it. So you did get some experience at field corner. Right. I did. I did. Right. So uh I mean, have how do you feel like you're come a long way so far in spring camp? I mean, obviously, uh, I mean you're not a finished product. I'm sure Coach Newberry and Coach Green are uh on you to get better in certain areas. Most definitely they ride me every day, uh push me to like my highest potential and everything like that. But I feel like spring ball has been going really well. Um, especially just like clicking with all the, cause we have a lot of young guys in the secondary. So like just clicking, getting that chemistry with them and just like competing really, that's really what spring ball has been like. And I think it's been going really well so far. So. Well, that's what I mean, right. Looking at the pre-spring depth chart, three current plebes are, are starters. Right. You and BD and of course, Rayon. Mm -hmm. What, uh, I mean, I think fans might feel a little nervous in a, American Athletic Conference, where so many schools throw it around, young bo young guys out there trying to hold down the fort. Um, you guys probably got a little collective chip on your shoulder. Oh, yes. I feel like we have a lot to prove this year. It's a proving year, most definitely, especially for us in the secondary. I feel like we're up to the challenge. Ray, he played a lot last year. He started most of the season last year. And then BD also seen a lot of action. So we have like not a lot of experience, but we have some experience and we've seen how that next level is and like how we need to perform. So I feel like we're up to the task and we'll be there to meet it. So. So you, you and Ben Beatty, pretty good buddies. Yeah. Me and Beatty. We, yeah. We, we've been clicking um, all season in the spring ball. So I feel like we have some good things in store. So you talked about improving. What are some of the things that coach Newberry and coach Green have asked you to work on? Is there anything in particular, I'm um, flipping the hips. I mean, I'm trying to think of things that they want cornerbacks to, to get better at. Maybe your back pedal. I don't know. What what are some of the things they, they feel you need to improve technique and fundamental wise? All right. So this year, um, a big emphasis on this spring ball was being a disruptive defense, a disruptive force as uh, just being passive. So um, they've impl implemented things such as ball hawks in practice, counting ball hawks. So like whenever you break up a pass, get an interception, stuff like that we'll put on the leaderboard, stuff like that. So um, part of getting those ball hogs, he's a big part Coach Green has been putting in is the three-step read. That's been a big um, a big emphasis of his. So like when we do one-on-ones or just anything, we practice in our three-step reads, getting the first look at the quarterback to see if it's a quick ball, just so we can be like those quick passes, we can break them up more and just be more like effective instead of just like letting receivers just, you know, catch the ball and like have their, have their way. So I say that's been a big, a big emphasis that's been different. So uh, I see that your father was a uh, four-year letter winner at USC as a defensive end. I guess you didn't get his size, huh? All right, my little brother did though. Yeah, my little brother he he took those 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 jeans. But where, you know, where is he? Does he play play ball somewhere? Your brother? Yeah, he's a singer. He's actually uh, going to Yale. He's playing he's playing football at Yale this next year. He's uh, one year lower than me, one year younger than me. So he'll be at Yale this next. Uh, this next year. Wow, one one son at the Naval Academy and another at Yale. Your parents must be very proud. And I owe it all to them, really. So your dad's name is Lawrence Larry. They don't call him Larry Larry, do they? 
yeah, I, he gets made fun of for that all the time. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I call him that all the time. Yeah. Larry, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my grandparents about that. <laughs> Um, so had they been able to get out from California and see you play a little bit last year? Yeah, they actually, yeah, they, my parents, they've always told me since I was young that they were going to come see me play because um, I always told them I was going to play and all that. And they said that we're, we're going to be there. So they actually made most of the games. They only missed, they didn't make the first game, but they made pretty much all the games. So I have a very supportive family behind me. Well, with, with your brother playing at Yale, they ought to relocate to the East Coast. It's going to be hey. piling up the miles, son. And my, my mom will figure it out. She'll, she'll get it done.